about the way we can move from point A to point B. So we decided to come and show you how you do that in the air. And we have traditionally been a company that has changed the way the world flies. And this is just another example of that. CES is also really important to us because there are early adapters here of technology. Early adopters are the people we're looking for because this vehicle is gonna reach out to the masses. It's no more just elite military customers and elite commercial customers that can take off vertically, land vertically, and go to where they wanna to get to. This is now gonna be about my grandparents, my kids, and quite frankly, me. Going from place to place, avoiding traffic, tying in my different modes of transportation into the best way to get from point A to point B. So the other reason we're here is because this vehicle is going to be a part of the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things is all, all around us at CES. From the minute that we designed the first piece and its digital creation, all the way out through manufacturing and the maintenance of the vehicle, the digital thread and the Internet of Things is going to make our experience and the experience of our customers and operators easier and more enjoyable. Inside the cabin, you're going to be connected. Yes, we're gonna connect you from point A to point B, but you're also going to be connected while you're on your ride. So you can interact with your friends that you're traveling with, make a phone call, connect to the internet, find out what was going on where you came from, and find out what was going on from where you're going. So that's a really exciting piece about being at CES too. Third piece is we're hiring. We're hiring the best engineers around the world right now to come and work with me and my team on a vehicle like this, to come and work on the V280. Anybody know what the V280 is? That's a fourth generation tilt rotor. Flies like a helicopter, flies like an airplane. It's gonna revolutionize the future of flight for the military and you can come and work in that program as well. So if you're a world-class software engineer, electronic engineer, if you're a world-class autonomy engineer, or anything that you think should be on this vehicle, come and talk to the Bell folks here in the booth, Linda Manning, our recruiters here, and a few of our engineers will engage you as well in that. So we're really excited about that piece too. So let's talk a little bit about Bell Helicopter and who we are. If, you know, if you're an aviation kind of geek like I am, you know us but a lot of people here may not be familiar with our brand. We've been innovating for 80 years now. We have uh, X planes in our portfolio that people don't even remember anymore. Bell Aircraft, which was the company we came from, broke the sound barrier, the X-1. Bell Aircraft studied swept wing jet flight, the X-5. We did the jet pack I'm pretty sure between before Iron Man was even around. So if you want a jetpack, which I'm waiting for mine too, maybe we'll come up with that as well. We had already done it back, I think, in the 70s. Vertical lift now is in our blood, but we haven't forgotten our airplane routes as well because vehicles like the V-22, the V-280, the XV-15, they fly like a helicopter and an airplane. This vehicle will fly like a helicopter and an airplane. And so we're using that past history to continue our story into the future. The 525 will be the first commercially certified fly-by-wire helicopter in history. Our fly-by-wire experience is another reason that we are going to bring this to you sooner and safer than anyone else out there. Fly-by-wire is the first step in autonomy because it's the first step that you take away some of the pilot's responsibility and turn them into a mission and safety officer. And we'll do the same here before we go to fully autonomous flight. So Bell is looking forward to taking that rich tradition of innovation, extending it into this vehicle and making it something that's accessible to each and every one of us. So today you see some of our our customers to date coming in and have the experience you can do the same you join us on a line on the other side of the vehicle and we will take you through this experience you'll get to get inside something that's gonna feel like 
a luxury automobile to you, something that's going to feel like a first class flight. Um, it's going to have a, a virtual experience of the interconnectivity that you'll experience on the real aircraft, and you'll get a sense of what it means to move from point A to point B in the air. I'll tell you a little story about some of the things we do today to energize people about what this vehicle can do. The Uber Hero route in Dallas is from DFW Airport to Frisco. That trip in a car during rush hour takes an hour and 10 minutes. In a vehicle like this, it'll take seven or eight minutes. You've just won back one hour of your time for your children, your friends, your business. I always use it for the gym. You know, I, I make sure that extra time goes there. And uh, I think that's an important part of it all too. I didn't get a lot of smile, I got a smile from Chelsea on that one. Um, and I just can't believe that we wouldn't embrace that. That's the feeling that I get when I fly like that. It's a wonderful feeling about winning back time that is so precious to us today. How many people don't even think about that trip? Today, I drive and I'm thinking, well, it's 45 minutes of my life gone, I gotta get to work. But if I can get a half hour of that back because I can take one of these, my whole day changes. So join us in the experience, feel that wonder with me, feel the wonder of technology that um, I also really love, and it really just enjoy it and, and picture yourself in this vehicle, which is soon to come. The other thing I wanted to do in this session is I wanted to thank a few people who contributed to what you're seeing in front of you. So Roush Enterprise are the folks that make these wonderful mock-ups. It's not done better anywhere in the world. You can see the refinement, the interior, the mechanisms, and we really appreciate the team and what they contributed to it. Another group that I want to thank is Sector 5 Digital. All of the content that you see in here Sector 5 Digital. All of these sexy lines, all of the aesthetics, it's a combination of the Sector 5 creative team and our creative team at Bell that brings this to life. So I really want to thank the Sector 5 Digital team as well. Thank you. And then GES, who helped us design this wonderful booth. It's a booth like no other that we've had at, uh, at a show. We think it's appropriate for CES and we thank them as well. So I'm going to open it up to some questions and answers, and then we'll let you get uh, your, your experience on the Bell Air Taxi right after that. Are there any questions? Yeah. When do you actually see these happen? Yeah, so Bell believes that we'll see flying air taxis in the mid-20s. That's the reality of it for us. Any other questions out there? Sure, yes. Yes, that's a great question, thank you. Uh, the question was, where do they take off and land? So if you take the experience with us, you're gonna experience what we call a vertiport. There are vertiports that are gonna be constructed around different cities, maybe up to hundreds per city, that you would enter into, take an elevator up to the top or, or, or actually walk out to the landing place itself, and then take your ride from there. You, there are some models like uh, the Uber collaboration that we have, when they open up a city, they bring a real estate developer with them who does the vertiport, integrates it into the community. Now the vertiport can be an amenity for your city. It could be an amenity for your condominium uh, building. It could be an amenity for the mall, your favorite place to go shopping. So those vertiports will be constructed separately and integrated into the network for the takeoff and landing portion. Great question, thank you. Any other questions out there? Hey, we got one, yeah. So uh, right now we're working with the FAA. Um, I think you may, by asking that question, you may know that Bell has certification experience in both Canada and the United States. But right now this is a, a US project and we'll likely start with the FAA. Yep, and uh, that's a great point for me to segue into another really important piece to think about when you think about these vehicles. I never disparage fellow engineers and fellow technologists because the things that we do are difficult. But Bell is ready to bring this product to you safe, certified, and ready to do the mission. 
We have experience certifying aircraft like this. We're the only people that have ever fielded a transformative lift aircraft, one that flies like a helicopter and flies like an airplane. So we're gonna bring that experience to bear on the building and the design of this aircraft and the certification. Yes, sir. Great question. So the question was, does this require a pilot or is it autonomous? We're gonna design our first autonomously, but we believe when the aircraft comes to the market, the consumer will want to look left and see a human being there. So the first flights, there will be a pilot on board, but we want everyone to think of that pilot as that safety and mission officer because the fly-by-wire system and the autonomy system is already going to be on board backing that person up for contingencies as they may come. Once we feel comfortable that we've explored those contingencies, this will become a fully autonomous aircraft. The four of us can get on board, punch in our destination, and the vehicle will take us to that city place or vertiport. Thank you. Any other questions out there? You got another one? Great. Yeah. <clears throat> Before you talk about the great challenges, I wonder which one actually is the greatest. If it's about like processing power for making this kind of vehicle autonomous today, if it's bringing down the cost to solve that such a thing is actually viable for everyone and not for like uh, people that are super rich. Right. So which is actually, actually the biggest problem today? Well, I don't like answering the biggest because there's a series of them that we have to always keep, uh, keep in front of us. I usually break down that question into technology, into customer and community acceptance, and cost then becomes a part of that. Cost is one of the, one of the big challenges, but in order to bring it to bear on the masses, it needs to come down. And the way it will come down on this vehicle is through lower direct operating costs. These vehicles want to operate for 2,000 hours a year. That's pretty high for a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So when we bring the direct operating costs down, that scale starts to benefit us a lot. On the technology side, autonomy is a challenge, but it's being done as we speak today. It's not transporting people around in an urban environment, but the technology's there. So now it's about bringing it to bear on the commercial and civil um, uh, market. Another challenge is the electrification of propulsion. Being honest about this uh, aircraft, it takes off vertically and lands vertically. That requires a lot of power. So Bell's gonna start off with a hybrid electric vehicle and as batteries mature and get more energy dense, we will replace those uh, hybrid systems with electric systems. So it's a challenge there, but it's one that we know how to deal with because power is the first thing we always think about but certifying a new electrified propulsion system is, is tough. Third one is customer acceptance. We really think that's the big hurdle. We need to make each other. And I don't wanna say you or me, we need to help each other become more comfortable with these vehicles. Bell Helicopter does nothing unless it's safe and of the highest quality. So we want you to take that message internally, but take it out to your friends and your family, we are going to build a vehicle that is safe and transport you from one place to another. So we want people to know that autonomy is a big step for acceptance, but I think once people get the feel for it, they'll realize that that's okay too. There's not a lot of uh, hands-on being done on the flights we take from Dallas to Las Vegas anyway.